Hello, everyone. Welcome to Artful Impact. Today, we have Adrian Castro. He is a maestro when it comes to the independent filmmaking industry scene. He does everything, directing, producing, writing, VFX, sound, huge film buff. And he is an eternal Benjamin Button because he just keeps on, you know, giving us his youthful energy when it comes to making films and persevering. So welcome. Thank you so much for coming and being a part of this. Adrian, tell us what was the beginning of you and your love of films like? The the beginning of of my love of films. I've loved films since I was a child, Um, mostly because my parents were big film buffs. And at the time on TV, all they showed was just movies. You know, it was just movies. There was no reality shows or anything. So it was just movies. And you had Bill Collins, uh, golden years of Hollywood and Friday, Saturday nights. And he was like my teacher. I, he'd talk about movies and I'd learn from him. And then from then on, and then my parents would be telling me about this actor and this film. Mostly they were like Italian Westerns and <laughs> Italian films. And I'm like, okay, okay, okay. And then um, in 1982, when um, E.T. came out, uh, my mom took me to see that. And then I came out and I said, that's what I want to do mm-hmm. straight away. Because I just loved how Steven Spielberg just made me cry, made me happy, made me excited. Just like, wow, how do you, you know, how can you do that? So I, from then on, I just started learning, um, you know, internet, so books and magazines. I'd be, going, I'd be buying Fangoria, like, cause I love horror. Fangoria or Starlog magazine. Starlog was a, was a science fiction magazine, like science fiction movies. They're just makings of books. I'd buy the making of this, the making of that. And, and, and back then when the, a movie come out, like, you know, there's like, now there's like, you know, the feature it, like behind, you know, they'll do a behind the scenes, but they don't really show you how they make it. Like just people just talk, we did this, we did that. <laughs> but back then when there was a making, it was a making, they showed you like the making of this, like there was like the making of Return of the Jedi, the making of Indiana Jones. And they showed you how they made stuff and all of that. I just like absorbed. And I started like, putting into practice i got myself a super 8 film camera and i started making little super 8 little crappy little things and then late 80s came you know video you know video cameras so i started making my little video uh, short films but they were mostly like um martial arts films because i love jackie chan Mm -hmm. on jackie chan so doing my own jackie chan kind of things and then from then on let finish school and did film school i knew most of the the uh the um the theory i just need to do the practice and i was like i was lucky to use film 60 millimeter film so i love doing that and it just progressed from there and i'm always absorbing seeing technology change learning the technology so i could jump onto anything as i as i as things came along and then connecting with people and then i met you mm-hmm. and then just went on from there you know oh you love martial arts films too great let's mm-hmm. do stuff and we just started doing stuff yeah so yeah I think what I love about you is you're always like, why not? Why not? <laughs> why not? <laughs> yeah, you know, you're always, you're this this person who's always seems to be able to figure out a solution for things and you you just naturally gravitate to, you know, breaking things down and go, yeah, we can do it if we do this and that. So I think it's it's quite interesting that with that sort of mindset, you're, you're able to do some you know, interesting, make some interesting films in genres that usually use a lot of big budget, but you're able to like use green screen and, you know, and figure it out like practicals as well. So can you talk us to a little bit about like how, you know, getting hands on what, what's that like uh, for you and how does that, how does breaking down stuff? Like what does your brain look at when it comes with up with these ideas? Because my brain is very visual. I was really shit at school because I'm always looking at the window and daydreaming. That's that's all my report cards is like, Adrian needs to stop daydreaming. That's what it says, literally. So, and my brain was not meant for studies. It was meant for creativity. And so I would, I would love to get, when I get home, I'd be watching TV and watching shows and movies. So that was my school because I watched so much stuff and read how things are, bit, um, uh, are, are put together, specifically back then, because I showed you how to do things. So I absorbed all that stuff. And when it came time, came for me to, to do things like I knew how to do it. Oh, well, we could do it by doing this. We build this and put a background here. It was very easy because the knowledge was there. And this is what I tell a lot of new filmmakers that like, you need to watch um, a lot of things, you know, you know, like, you know, like even my host, um, <laughs> watch 
watch so much because you learn so much. And I'll even, be like, hey, Adrian, I'm making this thing. What shall I watch? You'll be like, hey, this is, okay, cool. <laughs> so you're like my cheat sheet. <laughs> yeah. And, the, and and when I'm filming stuff, I'm I'm doing things. And then when I watch it, I'm like, and I'm looking like, hey, that's from that film. And mm-hmm. I didn't realize I pulled it out of my brain and I'm that's recreating it because so I've watched cool. so many things yeah. and I keep watching and re-watching because mm-hmm. I love like genres. I love horror and, and sci-fi and action. I'm always going back to stuff because I'm learning and, and absorbing that stuff so I can pull it out mm. whenever I need to. So it's just second nature to me because it's just stored in my brain. Yeah. And the more, the more you watch things and learn, the more it's there so you can pull it out for like let's do this shot specifically you know when dvds came out with director's commentary everyone you should watch director's commentaries because that explain to you about how we did this shot like oh Mm -hmm. i can do that for the you know put that into practice Mm -hmm. so that's what it comes down to yeah it's 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 fascinating because like you do fight choreography in action directing and like for me over the years i've had the privilege to see you in action and it's always like you're like in the zone and all of a sudden things just come out and you just do things so fluidly. And and because I've worked on different productions and seeing how the system works, I feel like that's that the, the creativity is what they lack. And there's this, always this being locked in to create brawler style action. Whereas for some reason, I think a lot of times people in the action scene in Australia might not have the capability of shots and cut like a, as a, as a filmmaker. You know what I mean? So I think mm. you have a very um, special ability that you're able to do that. And you do it so quickly. You can just come up and just do things. If there's a problem here, you're able to fix it, uh, which is very refreshing. But at the same time, I'm, I'm feeling like, you know, there's probably people in, in the industry that will probably a bit jelly of that as well, you know? <laughs> yeah, well, you know, I've, because I grew up in the 80s and watching uh, all the Hong Kong action films i loved going, was seeing all those films going to the chinatown twin cinema watching you know when they came out and because i did martial like i was doing martial arts and I still do it it was like i'd be i'd go home and then practice it and practice that scene and recreate that scene so it just because martial arts is now is the the movement is second nature it's just i don't know what the word is it just it just you just do it it just yeah. comes out when you when you um a, a martial artist um, to creating a fight scene, it's 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 just there because I've seen so much. Like I would just do this, so I can just pull it out. Mm. And I, I love I love the old style. I love mm-hmm. seeing the action. So that's that's my that's my thing. Mm. Um, yeah, that's why I love doing it. Yeah. Now you've done um, <clears throat> you you've been able to pivot and like work with like the sort of vampire stuff, like. Tell us your fascination with with, with that genre. I've, I've always loved, I love horror. I love, mm. I do love, I don't know why, but I do love, I was recently thinking about, like, why have I almost, why have I always done always vampire related things? So yes. my very first short film that I ever made when I started doing filmmaking was uh, called Night. It was a, uh, it was a vampire film. It was, a, it was a noir detective story about a detective discovering there was vampires in Sydney. So that was my first thing, and I just kept on doing that kind of thing. I I love you know the eighties and seventies vampire films. Mm. Um, I think manner maybe they just affected me, mm. but yeah, I love going to that genre. So that's why I, um, I made in two thousand nineteen. Uh, I did a, a short form series for ABC iView called Night Walkers as part of an initiative mm. and a digital comedy first initiative, and and I got a chance to do. Because I, re- I wrote a feature film that I wanted to do of Nightwalkers years earlier on, but and then the series came, like this opportunity came up, so I thought, oh, let's do it as a series. And then, like, oh, I want to do more of that. Mm-hmm. So I got a chance to do uh, my, because I love the 80s styles, so I got a chance to do the 80s tone, the look, the comedy. And yeah, it was a nice little dabble into, into that. Mm. And in Australia, do you feel like that, that like, is like accessible like do people do that genre a lot or what, what's your the, the, hor- the horror because horror is, is is a huge market in australia there people are doing it but it's not it's not really mm. being seen mm. it's not really getting out there uh, people are making things but uh, mm. you know a lot of the issues with australian films is, is is the marketing the marketing there's no money for marketing so no one knows 
a lot of Australian movies come out. There's a lot of Australian. If you do, you, if you look up a lot of the list of Australian films that come out the last few years, you probably wouldn't have heard of them. But like, oh, what is this? What is this? Because no one knows it. Ca- it came out. Mm. Um. So yeah, that's that's a big issue. Um, so, but with people are doing little horror films here and there. But you know, what's your plan of getting it out there? Mm. How are you going to get it out there? And I think that's a real big issue. Yeah. Not with just horror, but with a lot of Australian films. Mm. It's, it, yeah. Now, for you, like from what you can see with the, you know, film industry, like you graduated, you know, studying film, like you could have, like in essence, worked in a company or, you know, worked on this late, but you didn't choose that trajectory. Why is that? What What do you see as a flaw or some some challenges that? that- uh- one one is my issue because like I want to do it myself, you know. I want to do it myself, and uh, you know that was uh, my mentality was wrong <laughs> back then. Um, but also, I didn't know, mm-hmm. I didn't know what to do. They don't teach you that in film school. They teach you how to do things, but they don't teach you how to how to go and get the money, how mm-hmm. to connect with people, how to do this, how the system works. You know, they don't teach you any of that. Mm-hmm. It took it took decades. Until in 2017, uh, with my, uh, I had a, you know we both have a mutual friend, you know Craig, Craig Anderson, and, and and he's my he's my mentor. Yes, yeah, you, you know he rang me up saying, hey, this is an initiative happening called Fresh Blood with ABC. Mm. You should you should apply. I went, oh, okay, mm. you know because I'm we're just floating around, and then yeah. I applied it, and then I got my first taste of the system. Mm. Like, oh, they don't, <laughs> teach, they don't teach you this at all so now that i know i like to teach new filmmakers do this don't do this Mm. do this you know tick these boxes Mm. wow you know but for you do you feel like the industry in australia and let's say like the us there is a marked difference there is to content creating and what is sort of approved and 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 um What's in demand? Yeah, well, because because we have a different system here. You know, we've got one one government body that has all the funding, so you 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 know you're dealing with that mm-hmm. body and whatever agenda is happening, issue is happening in the world. You know, you got to navigate that mm-hmm. river. You know, to try and get your your stuff in there. Whereas you know the US, that because it's so huge and there's so many studios that have money you can approach these studios you know there's so much money in america I mean, you, you you know yeah. here it's different because it's just it's very limited mm. and being an emerging artist is very difficult to get in there because you've got to connect with other production companies who are established and, and it's very hard so it's very it's, yeah even though the filmmaking is very competitive but it's very very hard here Mm-mm. Now, for you, in terms of um, filmmaking, like you're really big on the sound stuff. Like um, for Echo A, like the sound really lifted the film up. Like you know, you really know how to build the moments. Like I feel like sometimes your sound design feels like they're visual. It sounds weird, but it's like it's an auditory piece of work. But when you, the way you do it, it feels like it's it's quite like a big like it. You can feel the film more. Like. Mm. How did you even like really deepen that practice? Uh, well, again, because I love passionate about movies and stuff, but I love sound. Mm-hmm. Um, growing again, growing up in that time period in the seventies and eighties, and and having the unique sounds, new sounds uh, 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 come to light, and like, oh, I love that sound, and and um, specifically like Ben Burt when Ben Burt created you know the, the the sound design for Star Wars and, and Indiana Jones. You know, he created a new, new, unique sound with punches and explosions. I love that, and I, and I keep using that stuff. And so, I was very interested in doing in 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 that thing, and and also going to the movies and and hearing crisp crisp sound, you know, on film prints. And when digital sound came out with DTS, when Jurassic Park, like, oh wow, so so loud. And that's a it's really important sound because it, it, you get. It takes you into, into that. You got shit sound, that you, you lose interest. Like now, sound is completely different in mm-hmm. with digital digital prints, digital movies, and the cinemas. It's like 
it's not it's nowhere near as good as mm. as, a, as a film print, a hundred percent. Um, and so I want to co- incorporate that feeling. Um, and, it, and even it goes down to the earlier on when um, Sergio Leone, Leone made um, Once Upon a Time in the West. Mm. He made it, and the thing of, of the sound design was was a character in the film. So it it you know it's a character thing. So there wasn't music; it was like a big sound, and that's like mm. it takes you like your focus to that what's happening there. So I like to do that kind of thing. Yeah. And it, it it really shows that the times have kind of like they, they have changed. I feel like a lot of the movies back in the days, there's something m- like more individual and more in depth with the films and the quality of it, and also even acting as well. Like I feel like sometimes, like when I look at stuff made in the modern context, it's even the poster design, even sound. Like it's it's kind of like is it me cookie cutter? It feels like yes. It it's is. like, does that sound like the other film? Does that poster look like every other poster? Yes. Thing? Yeah. 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 It, yeah. It's it's become that way. Like specifically, uh, marketing with post design, it's just trash beyond trash. It's so bad. Um, studios is like ah, it it yeah because in the past there was a company that would handle movie posters and they would hire artists to do specific wow. designs, and then when they shut down. Um, studios took over, and this is where, like in the '90s, we've got the began of the Photoshop heads, wow. and now it's just all Photoshop heads and just really beyond trash. There's the showmanship is gone, yeah. and there there is uh, occasionally, specifically with genre stuff like horror and sci-fi, they'll they'll someone will do an art work for that because it's like like for example, like the Stranger Things series, the the posters are drawn to emulate that feeling back then, and it, and it's unique. You know, and I love doing. I love doing that. I love. I like. I gravitate to that stuff because it, it stands out. Yeah, um, it's interesting because yeah. you you the what you've done, like how you pursue filmmaking. I always go. It's like the one man band thing, and I find that in the industry we always kind of be we're labeled as oh unprofessional or whatever hobbyist or whatever. But at the same time, like the fact that you're able to develop an eye in all these different areas, I feel like when you actually get into like a bigger production i feel like sometimes they don't know what to do with you because you know so much <laughs> like you know what i mean like it's yeah kind of, yeah you, it's you, like, get, you get that thing of like you've got executives there like oh you can't edit this film yeah. and direct it you can't do that why not yeah you, you, you can't but uh, you know and uh, for the series nightwalkers I, I directed it i edited i did the yeah. sound design i did the visual effects Poster, yeah I did the poster because one budget was very tight, and two I could do it, and I'm very fast, and I know what I want, so I just did it. And then you know when it came out, they were like, "That's seventy five thousand dollars." Yeah. Like wow, you yeah. know. Yeah. I think so, you really gave the bang for buck. Like they're like, "What? Like this is confusing." Like you really sh- shook the industry because it's not just you know. I- like all the aesthetics that they felt that was expensive to do, that, that you cannot afford on a budget, you were able to do it. Yeah, it's just you know like, I mean? just get it done. I can do mm. it. Just do it. Mm, 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 which is amazing. And this is why we, we multi- multitask on our productions. We just do it. I had a meeting with um, um someone yesterday and, and and talking about you know you should get a, your production manager to do this. I said no, I'm just going to do it myself. It's so much faster. <laughs> exactly. We, exactly. we multitask. Yeah. And I think that's the the cool thing like I've learned from you over the years is that we need to breed or at least help um, the next generation to kind of take that on as well. Because if we kind of just specialize, unless we're really, really good at that one task, it's really hard to survive in, in the industry to even get your stuff out there. Because I've met people like, uh, you know, in our group and they'll be like, oh, you know, I'll, I'll direct when the right script comes or I'll, I'll, I'll you know, make my film when I'm ready. Yeah, and, and, and 10 years go past yeah. and they still haven't done anything. I mean, I, yeah. I don't want to name names, but it was like um, before that, they'll be like, oh, you know, what you guys are doing, it's a bit like hodgepodge. But then they, they there's this fear of, fear of, doing it yourself and therefore you don't end up doing anything and you just end up being like begrudgingly on the side watching everyone else make stuff yeah you just, you just gotta do it you gotta get in there and do it and, and learn when you learn how you when you do it so you know there's people there's a lot of it's a, uh, it's a thing about like indie people and and filmmakers is 
they don't like want help mm. or like when help is offered they don't want to take it uh-huh. and it's like you know well we can collaborate we can do you know let, let me help you do this and like yeah yeah oh, thanks i'll think about it but like okay and yeah. then you know time passed like where are you at oh you stopped doing it oh you're not doing it you know it's just you know you're not gonna you're not gonna progress if you don't do it and if you don't get told oh your stuff is shit then you yeah. won't learn yeah and then like okay how do i do it better and that's that's where a lot of things ha- uh main e- problem is the ego it's like you need to be told that is bad mm-hmm. that writing is bad Mm. Uh, all right and don't get offended i know mm. it's human nature but like okay tell me where and how mm. do i fix it for the next yeah. one you know yeah. like with me and you like i'll tell yeah. you that's crap and you oh yeah all the crap. time i think you that's our, our our banter we'll be like oh this is that blah, blah blah but then you know we still go okay well this is what's happened how do we make the best of it we need to finish it how do we amplify yeah. you know we always get around it you know and i think that's the great thing about us is that we still you know it's been years right we've been in the industry for like what more than 15 years and every single moment we see the next generation come up and then they die off and they come up and they die off and we're still sitting there i mean we're not like honchos but we're still makers so we still you know um find ways to create little things just to keep ourselves like you know like all the little tired cops we do just to Mm. keep ourselves kind of fresh and just to remind ourselves the skill sets that we have and i think what i love seeing is you whenever you get on like uh, an action kind of title copy thing that we do, you're like, ah, oh, just wondering if I'm rusty or not. And then you just full on jump and do a spin <laughs> kick. You're like, yeah, I can still do it in the next Yeah. Oh, my God, my body. <laughs> yeah, there's, there's, there's the, the doubts creeping. Like, oh, what am I doing? Do I know what I'm doing? And then you just you know, get yeah. yeah, does this shot work? Yeah, but then I, it just, I, yeah. And it's not until I actually edit like, oh, okay. Yeah. It does work. Yeah. Yeah, which is such an amazing skill. So for you, like, um, what some of the things that you are cooking at the moment? Like, is there a scripts you're writing or certain areas of the industry you're really trying to figure out at the moment? Um, I, 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 for the last two years, because of the, the whole pandemic stuff, I've been, uh, I spent, um, my team and I spent developing more Nightwalkers. Like, well, we thought, well, respect into a movie, we'll, you know, a certain trajectory. And I spent most of the time working on other people's projects doing the sound, doing the edits or whatever. And then, and then I'm seeing them like, oh, they're making a movie. They're making a movie like, well, what, like, what am I doing? Mm. You know, like I'm working on other people's stuff. I need to focus on me now. So yeah. now it's full force of, of um, making Nightwalkers as a feature film and going a trajectory of, of, well, let's do a proof of concept. Mm. Let's get some funding to do that. Um, let's see all the elements that's going to help it get eyes on it yeah so it's in those the, the last two years i've learned um through uh, a, a good friend uh, richard patterson he's got a production and marketing company mm-hmm. and he's he's a genius on, on marketing and how things work and through him i've learned okay what i should have on my projects that's going to get eyes on it you know all the ingredients like well let's get this poster artist to do this well this poster artist is very famous because he did this poster oh people are going to remember that you know so they'll they'll see like oh what are they in you know what i'm saying all these ingredients so it's that's what i'm, I'm working on of, of getting the right ingredients that's going to get eyes on my project mm. like the marketing side and getting people to see it i think marketing is so, a huge thing like I, I only started to maybe get into it a bit more uh only like probably the last few years because i realized oh you know if, if you get the spotlight or whatever you can then leverage it and put it into certain things or yeah. use that as a way to get other things so i i've, I've now started to see that all the things you know like even with cynthia rough rock on a lovely warrior it's like being able to just you know cold email like stuff like that i realized you know there, there shouldn't be any fear anymore and then you would no like emails like just do it i'm like okay cool i've done it i haven't heard anything but at least i've done it you know so yeah putting our feelers out there and being yeah it's it's actually just going for it mm. you know like what's the worst they're gonna say no no yeah just, yeah. just do it just contact yeah, yeah. you never and, know what's gonna happen and it's interesting because i feel like a lot of the stuff you do like i feel like the projects you do feels like they they will get the support outside of Australia. Yes, it, yeah. You know? I, I, and I think I, all my genre stuff is not really Australian centered. But it will get there because we're we're. I reckon with due time, we're building that bridge, 
And I'm imagining if you were outside, people would be like full on, you'd be, you'd be like picked up already, you know, but because people don't pay attention to Australia yet because like what's in Australia. So I think once people can start to companies and distributors can start looking their way, then they can see that there will be content that would be made and build that sort of like um, ecosystem. Yeah. You know I mean? Can you, can you pause for one second? Yep. Just pause, just pause. Mm-hmm. <sighs> yes, I know. So. Sorry, <laughs> just one second. That's a good to go. I'll edit it out. Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, I can hear you. All right, sorry, sorry about that. Louise okay. needed, needed plugging in. She still can't, you know, she can't do stuff for herself. Yeah, yeah, all good, all good. Okay, yeah. back. So, yes, yeah, so I, I find that with you, like, like you haven't, like, as much as there's moments where, you know, as indie filmmakers, we get a bit like, ah, jaded about, you know, the industry. I do too, you do too. But there is still, like, there's a part of you that's still quite adamant, quite strong in, in, has pl- placed you know a big belief in what you're doing and i find that it's it's been always the undercurrent to to what you do and I, for some reason sometimes i always think you know you talk about spielberg and, and all these great people and i feel like you know eventually the, that's gonna come closer you know mm. because you understand just the magic of the old school stuff and i feel like people who are in the current times they're not they're not digging deeper but eventually that stuff is needed to be brought back, especially if you're connecting with really old school people who are probably going to be looking for the next generation anyway. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. So I think there is something there that I think would probably eventuate. But for you, what's your bucket list? What's your bucket list when it comes to the the work that you're now currently on and how you, you'd like to see it happen? Bucket like? list. Uh, getting a project made mm. and then getting it seen. Mm. And people liking it, but also mostly working with um, veterans. Like for example, I would love one of my bucket lists. I would love John Carpenter to do a theme for one of my films. Okay. You know, I know he still does he does stuff, and and he's contactable. So you know, that's a bucket list. Is he in you know? LA? <laughs> I don't know which. I don't know where 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 he is, but like you know, is accessible. So you know, that's on the cards. I'm gonna go for. It. I'm gonna try that. Yeah. That would be a dream. You know, I, I um, for Nightwalkers we've got um, veteran. You know, Ken Foray has been doing yes. the dead. There's no way in my entire life I would have thought that I would work with him. Mm. Never, you mm. know. And then chances, like opportunities happen. It's like, oh yeah, I can get in contact with him. Really? Okay. And then he's like, yeah, let's do this. And I'm still in contact with him. And you know, he's he, you know he's still interested in doing more Nightwalkers. It's like. And then that's that's when I thought, you know what? It's not that hard to contact an actor. Like if they like something, they'll they'll do yeah. it. Hundred so, um, percent. And but in the main bucket list is to actually contact Steven Spielberg and just tell him thank you. Oh my god. That would be that would be I'll be happy with that. Okay. You know. I will try to. <laughs> I'm in America. I'm like trying to. So who's that actor again? <laughs> I'll be like Adrian. <laughs> yeah, I think that this is this is really cool about you is that a lot. Of, I have to be like I don't know the depth of info, but you're always like a phone call or a Zoom away for me to go fact check. Is this you know <laughs> like yeah. I remember like meeting certain people and I'm like oh isn't he like the dude from that other film and I'm like I haven't seen that film but what can you give me the update so that I can do this conversation uh, <laughs> like yeah. but hey we we make such a good team yes that. but I love the fact that you're always such a a giving human being and you really 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 are so passionate about film you know not 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 just for the face value of the fame or you know all that you really you love it as an art form you know mm-hmm. and, you, and 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 when you talk about it and what you've learned from it has been astronomical that i feel like 
a lot of the next generation would so benefit from. And I wish that the system really got you into it a bit more, but I do understand that it's Australia. I mean, if you get into the system, you're probably going to be like cutting five other people's jobs. You know what I mean? So <laughs> kind of like one of those things. But so, so for you at the moment, Nightwalkers is a thing that you would love to make happen. Yep. It's a feature film. So it's yeah. a, how do you describe Nightwalkers? Because who knows who's listening to this and if they like uh, it, they can contact it's, 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 it's a It's a homage to the 80s horror films, specifically like, you know, like The Lost Boys and Fright Night. It's, it's, a, mm-hmm. it's that homage. Yeah. So, you know, um, pretty much it, you know. And at the moment, you've, you've got like a feature length script? script? Um, no, not yet. Uh, that's why I'd like to. I'd love to get funding to get. So more like an outline. Yeah, yeah. 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 So you know, we, we yeah we do have a, a big outline. We spent a whole year developing it, so I just got to write it. Um, it's cool. So yeah. Yeah, but if it was to be like finance, you'll be able to move and. Oh yeah! Oh yeah! Do it. <laughs> yeah. Because you're like you're like you're a doer. <laughs> yeah, we're we're ready. We're we're hungry. We want to do it. Yeah. That's so cool. But for you, any last comments? If there was one advice you would give to the next generation, what would that be? Is to listen, learn, leave your ego at the door, mm. and you know, watch movies, watch old movies, you know, and and really, really take it in, and 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 don't be arrogant. Mm. You know, don't think you know everything. You know, I don't know everything. I, I still love learning new things, mm. and just and just connect with, you know, other filmmakers, and and just take a lot of advice, mm-hmm. and and just practice practice your, your your art. You know, do a little scene, shoot a little scene, and and recreate a scene. And like, okay, how and see how that works, mm. and and yeah. Awesome. Thank you so much, Adrian, for joining into Artful Impact because it's Thank you. You know, we have deep conversations about your practice and then other people can listen to it and then maybe pick at things and then inspire them to go ahead. But so, thank you so much. No, thank you.